Barkse Chamkrong is a legendary monarch of Cambodia, whose life and rule are known from the Cambodian royal chronicles. Despite a lack of historicity, the narrative of his epic has had a lasting influence on Cambodian culture and politics. According to linguist Savros Pu, the old Khmer meaning of the root Krong is kept in the name of Barkse Cham Krong, meaning the king watched over by a bird, while in modern Khmer, Krong means city, town, or country. The legend of Baxi Cham Krong, which originated in Wat Viha Sua, is told in the Cambodian Royal Chronicles, and it is presented here in the version published by Mac Folun in 1984. The legend was enriched in 1998 by further study of the chronicles in connection with Khmer folklore by Ross Chantrebo in his book on Khmer history. Auspicious sign of a being of merit. In 1552 of the Buddhist era, 1008 of the Christian era, Promkel aged 12, ascended the throne following Dombankranhaum. So the king ordered the astrologer to predict the future for him, I have merits. Will there be another man of merit who will come to take my throne? The astrologer prostrated himself and predicted to him, the being of merits is already born in the royal family. He is seven years old and fled in the form of a child of the people in a region outside the capital of this kingdom. He will come and may take the throne. This being of merits has the sign of the wheel on the palms of the hands and the soles of the feet. Having heard this, the sovereign was very concerned. He ordered the mandarins and royal servants to inquire, but they got nothing definite. So, the king ordered to take flour and spread it on vans, then to bring all the seven-year-old children who lived in the August Kingdom. Identifying the promised child, the governors of the provinces sent them all without exception. Upon arrival, they were asked to put the palms of their hands and the soles of their feet on flour, and if there was no trace of the sign of the wheel, they were released. Tarkohi also took Barkse Cham Krong there with the other children. He let him in and took the palms of his grandson's hands to put them on the flower. When the hands were withdrawn, the traces of the sign of the will were clearly found there. While the men were arguing, making a mess to look at the traces on the flower, Tarkohi, sensing the danger, grabbed Barkse Cham Krong, carried him in his arms and fled. Flight of Tarkohi Tarkohi had been able to get out, because the tumult was great, and the guards could not stop them. They brought this matter to the attention of His Majesty who ordered the troops to be raised to pursue and arrest Barkse Cham Krong. Tarkohi went to tell his wife what had happened in all respects, then asked her to prepare food. Then he went to take back Barkse Cham Krong, and carrying him in his arms, he fled through the forests. In the morning, they left their place of rest, and arriving on the edge of the river, they did not find a boat to cross to the other bank. Seeing a large rokar tree standing on their bank, and a large coiler tree on the other bank, Barkse Cham Krong said, if I possess merits, mean bound, and really must ascend the throne, may this tree bend forward, so that the lovier tree bends to meet it. The two trees then bowed to meet each other according to the invocation. They crossed the river and managed to reach the eastern bank. This is how there have been, since then and up to the present day, 
villages called Rokokong and Loviati. Ascension to the throne. King Promkel reigned 20 years and died at the age of 31. Then the dignitaries and all the mandarins, having learned that Bakse Champrong possessed miraculous merits, met and agreed to go and invite Bakse Champrong to leave the Penum Proceed region. Then they invited him to ascend the throne. A political myth. In 1951, historian Lawrence Palmer Briggs published The Ancient Khmer Empire, which was the first book to be assembled, compiled, and available in the English language about the Anka Empire. She tried to identify Barkse Chamkrong with Suryavarman's son, who presumably ruled from 1028 AD to 1070 AD and married pre Ningpo Yupise. This claim has not been accepted by other historians as it contains historical inconsistencies and confusions of different literary genres, Khmer inscriptions and royal chronicles. Today, it is widely accepted that the legend of Baxi Chamkrong is a legend composed in the 18th century by the rulers in Odong to support their territorial claims to the land of Cambodia. It is an antithesis of the myths related to the separation of the kingdom of Sukhothai led by Bang Klan Hao assisted by a local ally, Fokun Farmuing. According to Jacques Napote, the bird narrative may have been the symbol of a political myth to encourage soldiers among the gang of birds to practice the warrior cult vow to Tamo Anek, similar to that of Nik Tarkliang Moang. An etiological archaeology, Prasat Baxi Chamkrong. There is to the north of Anka, that is to say, Symbolically on the side of death, a small strange and ruined temple, called the Prasat Baxi Chamkrong. The complex is located about 150 meters north of Penum Bia Keng. The construction was ordered by King Harshavarman, AD 910-944, and completed by King Rajendravarman, at dates which do not match the legend of Baxi Chamkrong. The Prasat had a certain predisposition to receiving this new legend as it already kept the record of another legend of origin with its own inscription of the 10th century, which George's Coeds had described as a summary of the history of Cambodia from